Anything else? Let me see a show of hands of people who have their phones. Ah, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Uh, would you please be sure that they are on and that they, they are not on silent? And all of you who are firstborn, please stand up and starting from the front, would you go up the center aisle to the back, please? Uh, leave your seats. Take your phones with you. Uh, take your phones with you. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's it. That's good. <coughs> Now, would, you, would those of you who are later borns make your way down toward the front and start filling in these seats on the end? So I want firstborns in the back and laterborns in the front. Very good. <laughs> A lot of self-government self going on here. Soloway was um, a professor who studied for many, many years birth order in families, especially how the um, birth order makes us more or less likely to come up with revolutionary ideas in science and politics and religion. Now, very few of you have any idea what I've said in the last 60 seconds, <coughs> uh, which is, is very much my point about how difficult it is to get ideas through the chaos that we have created for ourselves in the current world by the constant stimulation of all the information that is flowing to us and from us. There are very, very clever robots out there, thousands of them, who are not distracted whatsoever. All these distractions and sorting them out and connecting them is being done by these robots they're otherwise known as databases. There are several gateways into these databases and many gateways out, but the worst tended of all, in and out, is your mobile phone. They put more information at your fingertips than you could have found in the world's great libraries. Alexandria, the British Library, the Columbia University Library, or all of them combined. They link you to everywhere your imagination can take you. But they also link everyone else to your imagination. Not just to your daily life, but to your secrets as well. The way you use the phone, the amount of data you put into it, with every call, every text, every email, every web search, every photograph, it all accumulates in databases. Google and Facebook and Amazon claim they own these materials once you or anyone else has put them there, not you. So they won't ever erase all the copies that they hold. They may erase the copy that's appearing on your Facebook page, but that copy, their copy is still sitting on their database. And people who do not have your interest at heart have numerous ways of cracking into those databases to steal your private information. They can use a court order. They can pay a bribe. They can steal it by hacking. Sometimes they can just buy it, promising to protect your identity, but there are ways around that too. Facebook and Google and Amazon will use your secrets to tempt you into buying more things. Cyber criminals will use your secrets to hack into your bank account or to steal your identity. In Britain, the largest media company in the country, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, used information they collected from phones to destroy reputations, end marriages, reveal the diseases of children, suppress political opposition. Your phone can help you find your way in a dark hall. It can also make you naked to the world. When you use your phone to distribute information, whether a text message or a photo or a compliment or an insult or a joke, you become a publisher. Is your material accurate? Is it honest? Does it violate anyone else's privacy? Is it slanderous or libelous? You have freedom of speech. You have freedom of expression. But you have no freedom to be forgotten. Ever sent a message that you thought was going to only one person and instead went to an entire list? I have. Ever said an unkind word to someone that you wish you hadn't? I have. I'm sure many of the rest of you have. 
Once those incidents are in a phone, they are there forever. Phones are like elephants. They never forget. Be careful with your elephant. It leaves very, very big footprints. Thank you very much. Uh, whether or not universities or a particular university is looking at your Facebook page to uh, see what timelines there are, uh, I would suggest that that depends on how interesting a person you are to the outside world. And whether the university does, or if you're running for student body president, one of your opponents who's also running for student body president has looked at your Facebook page and tried to find discrepancies between what you're saying and what uh, they see on your Facebook page, or find things that may be very embarrassing uh, that you have posted on your Facebook page, I think you can probably rest assured that anybody in a competitive environment is looking at your Facebook page. Um, and what they do with that information after it leaves, after you have posted it, um, the ways in which it may be manipulated or turned into something you wouldn't recognize are infinite. Uh, and it can be used against you forever. So be careful what you put on your Facebook page. Use some restraint and self-discipline. You have the freedom to post anything you want to on there, but you also have the freedom not to post. In the same way that we learn not to go with strangers. Um, we learn not to get in a car with stranger. Nobody has told us how not to get on the phone with a stranger. Um, Mr. Scardino, thank you so much for coming to speak to us today. And I think if there's one statement that you shared that resonated with me, and that is all of us have the freedom not to share information. And I think that that's important to keep in mind. So I'll dismiss you. Move quietly out of the theater. Those that want to remain behind for a little bit more of Q&A, feel free to stay.